I guess we're going to get started. Um, my name is Abu Edwards. Um, I am a consultant with the Committee of 70. Uh, just to uh, tell you a little bit about myself, I am from Philadelphia. I'm a graduate of Wilberforce University, which is a historically black uh, college uh, located in Ohio. Um, I've been in the political and advocacy world um, for about 10 years. Um, I was one of the ele uh, youngest elected committee people uh, in the city. Um, I got elected as committee person at 18 years old. Uh, I am 32. Um, some of my previous accomplishments is I had the opportunity to serve as the director of Black Male Engagement for the Biden campaign. Um, I also work as a consultant with All Voters Local, where I really focus on advocacy and election law and election policy. Um, I've been in this community all my life. I went to public school. I care about our community. I care about council medic redistricting um, because it's about council medic priorities um, and that impacts people. Um, and I'm glad to uh, co-host this meeting uh, with my good partner, uh, Pat Christmas. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, Pat. Introduce yourself. Sure, thanks. Uh, evening, everybody. Uh, Pat Christmas here, a staffer with the Committee 70, uh, formerly a, a high school science teacher here in the city of Philadelphia. One time, at some point, I will get myself into a class, back into a classroom, whether it's to teach science or, or, or uh, you know, government and, and civics. But um, uh, thrilled to be here with you this evening to talk about uh, redistricting, which is happening on multiple levels right now. Uh, and council redistricting in particular is what we're going to focus on. So thanks again so much for, for joining us. And um, I think, you know, with our group we have now, and since we have a small group, Pat, I want to do something a little bit differently. Um, I want to give people an opportunity to introduce themselves and let us know what organization you represent and what part of, and what brought you out to uh, council medic redistricting. So I'm not a teacher, I'm an organizer. Um, so I just call on people. So I see uh, Ms. Roxy right in front of my face. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you kick us off, Ms. Roxy. Hi, thank you. Um, and I knew you were gonna pick me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Roxy Rivera and um, I am a resident of Kensington, longtime resident. Um, and I am also uh, the secretary for Somerset Neighbors for a Better Living. What brought you to this meeting? Um, just wanting to learn more what's happening, what may be happening, um, wanting to give my feedback and input if possible, um, and just trying to stay, you know, abreast of everything that's going on, um, not only in the neighborhood, but in Philly. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Ms. Charlene? Hi there. I'm Charlene Wiltshire. And uh, I've been active, I guess, since April um, with the Fair Districts Pennsylvania, um, you know, contacting legislators and uh, the like about redistricting, trying to get them on board with the uh, Senate and the House bills that um, address transparency and uh, contiguous uh, compact mapping and so on and so forth. I'm also a uh, member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, which is an historically um, black sorority. Uh, we have formed a cohort of eight Pennsylvania members who are have been actively um, involved in redistricting, however, we cannot speak on behalf of the sorority without explicit permission of the national uh, headquarters. And so I am not here to, <laughs> to, uh, to address you. I'm just here to pick up information. We've been primarily focused on uh, congressional mapping and uh, state, well, the congressional map is just one map for the house. And then um, with the legislative uh, reapportionment commission um, redistricting for um, the the house the state house and state senate. Um, the house has been more active with public meetings than the senate has. The, the last public meeting I think that the senate had was in July, and that was before we got the finalized census data. So the house has been. Um, more transparent uh, than the Senate, in my opinion. This is my individual opinion. <laughs> and um, I'm here to now pick up information on 
what's happening locally because we all know that you know what happens locally then branches out to the state then to the u.s so it's really really important to get our maps right and it's really important to um with the increase in hispanic um population in certain districts to make sure that uh, these districts are not gerrymandered for um, political reasons. And um, I just want to see what's going on. Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate that. Um, yes. Ruben? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Ruben Feliciano. I am actually a urban planner from Chicago. I have family in Philadelphia. They live in the Hunting Park area and I am looking to relocate to Philadelphia. So um, as an urban planner, I'm very involved in issues of community revitalization, community empowerment, organizing, and just been doing my research and uh, see myself as part of the community. And I think redistricting is something that should be very, uh, very important, especially for representation, diversity, and equity issues that I'm passionate about. Thank you, Ruben. Um, I know later Pat can talk more about, you know, this model, you know, branched out of Chicago. Uh, you know, they have 50 aldermen and that's 50 districts and we're trying to, we're trying to get the 10 districts. So I take my hat off to those folks in Chicago for uh, leading those efforts as well. So thank you for joining us. They just had a meeting today for the rules committee of the city council. Yep. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, my mean, I may be pronouncing your name wrong. Robinson. I am a longtime member, uh, a resident of the uh, Kensington, and I'm a member of Somerset Neighbors Steering Committee. Could you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, uh, and I'm interested in uh, the redistrict and how it's going to affect our community. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bottega, did I pronounce that right? Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Andrew Ortega. I'm with the uh, East Kensington Neighbors. Uh, and yeah, I'm also interested in the redistricting process, uh, mostly from the RCO side of things. Currently, my RCO. Um, mostly is covered by the first district. And I feel that if you break up communities, you're adding a ton of work to uh, volunteer organizations that are already stretched pretty thin. The amount of things that are put into RCO's laps that normally would be a function of city government is, is huge. So if you go from dealing with one uh, city council person to multiple, uh, it, it could create a, a, a huge, huge issues, not to mention the fact that from district to district, their policies and their goals can be diametrically opposed. So, uh, you know, we, we deal with the first district mostly. We, we touch a little bit into Maria's seventh and splitting communities will create a situation that really is uh, re really difficult for the RCOs to navigate because it'd be adding a, a, another layer of complexity to what's already a, a, a pretty extensive ask for these uh, volunteer organizations. So that, that's basically my, my, my comment. And I, I, I think the the goal should be to keep communities w whenever possible within one district. So they, they aren't split in half. They aren't talking to two different people and you, you, your quality of life and the policies that are within your neighborhood are, are, are not so different depending on what side of the street you live on. But thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it seems like a lot of we get, we're joining a lot of a lot of people are joining. So if we can keep um, 
the introductions down to about 60 seconds. That would help us uh, tremendously since we started this process. Um, uh, Pastor Capers. That's good. After, good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Jackie Capers from Disney Nichols Church. Um, and um, I also um, agree with the gentleman who just spoke um, in terms of keeping the communities together. Because of the work that we're currently doing, I am in the Aramingo section and I'm a part of Somerset Neighbors for Better Living. And, um, you know, there's a lot of work that we're doing for that particular community. So I think the redistricting um, issue on the table would be very challenging based on the type of work that we're doing in the community today. Thank you. Um, Archbishop Mary Palmer. Grace and peace and good evening to everyone. I am Archbishop Mary Floyd Palmer. I am the presiding bishop of Philippi Council of Clergy, which is a citywide clergy organization. I also have members of my congregation that live in the Kensington and um, Port Richmond area. And so I'm here to collect information so that they can be better informed and be as active and responsive as they should be, not only as neighbors, but as citizens of the city of Philadelphia. Thank you for this forum. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Miller. Okay. Hi, how are hey, you? Uh, I'm sorry, it's two, it's two Millers. I'm sorry, uh, Anthony Miller and Ms. Linda Miller. I have to be a second. I'm sorry. Okay. I just saw two Millers. No problem. Hello, uh, my name is Anthony Miller. Um, I'm also connected with Somerset Neighbors for Better Living. Um, the, uh, the district line goes down uh, basically the middle of our service area, our territory at Somerset Neighbors. And um, I agree with what Pastor Capers and um, um, I forget your name, sorry. For, the other fellow was saying about, um, I also wanted to agree with Pastor Capers and what the other fellow was saying about the uh, necessity of keeping um, neighborhoods distinct, you know, neighborhoods together. Thank you, Mr. Miller, I appreciate it. Ms. Linda Miller. Um, good evening. My name's Linda Miller. I'm a member of the Northwest section of Philadelphia, and I've just been listening into all of the council um, discussions regarding redistricting. Thank you. Um, Ms. Brenda Mosley. Yes, good evening, everyone. My name is Brenda Mosley. I'm a resident of Kingston area. I'm also affiliated with NKCBC and on SNDL, Somerset of Better Living. I'm Neighbors of Better Living, and I'm also the Executive Director of Our Faith, Health, and Healing. And I'm here to collect information so that I can continue to inform the community about the council district. Thank you so much, Ms. Mosley. We appreciate you being here. Um, last but not least, uh, Carolina Edwards. Ms. Edwards. Okay, um, before I begin, did I not, um, did I call on everyone? Did anyone not speak or introduce themselves? If so, we are good to go. Um, Pastor, you can go to the PowerPoint. Uh, why are we here? Um, I think a lot of people are asking that question, you know, what is councilmatic redistricting? Um, and what are we gonna learn, um, you know, from this meeting and what are our goals? Um, you know, it's a, to learn about the council medical redistricting process and why it matters to everyone. Examine the current city council map and population counts and discuss, you know, the council district boundaries in our particular area. So welcome. Um, please, uh, you know, as we're, as we're working through each meeting, you know, each meeting is different. Each section of Philadelphia is different. And we ask, you know, everyone to allow us to get through the PowerPoint. Um, and to have questions at the end. We also, you know, in these meetings would like to make reference as, you know, to councilmatic districts and not council members, um, because this is not a personal attack to anyone. Um, this is not a community event, you know, to, you know, discuss, you know, what your council person is doing is not, and not doing. 
uh, this is literally a process to educate you about councilmatic redistricting and why it matters and how it literally impacts you and how you can use the tools that we provide to you to contact your council people um, to, 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 to uh, voice your, your, your voice uh, to make sure that this will be a transparent process for everyone. Next slide, please. What is city uh, council redistricting? Um, city council must redraw its 10 districts within six months after the US uh, census uh, releases its population. Districts are supposed to roughly have the same number of people. According to 2020 census, you know, our population in Philadelphia is 1.6 million. So if we have a population of 1.6 million, if you divide that by 10, you would see that roughly 160,000 members minimum should be in each councilmatic district. A mapping ordinance must become law by February 12th. New districts will be uh, in use by 2023, 20, 27, and 31. There's a little um, piece to um, the ordinance not becoming law by February 12th. Whereas if this law does not become, um, if they don't have maps by February 12th, um, then they, uh, by law and in their charter, uh, should not supposed to get not supposed to get paid. Now we all know that they're they're working on it, um, and everything is kind of backed up. So we're going to probably give them some leniency. But in the charter, if these maps are not uh, drawn and, and submitted to uh, uh, to the public um, MA law, then they shouldn't be they shouldn't get paid. Next slide, please. Why redistricting matters. Redistricting can determine um, who has a voice in the political process and who can run for office and who's elected. Many communities often will serve by being kept whole to have a lot of voice to their representatives. Communities split um, between districts and, uh, and have their representation power diluted. And I think, you know, a lot of us can talk about this, right? We, we live in communities where it's gerrymandered, where some communities across the street, you may have a different state rep or city council person, or if you walk down the street to a neighbor's house, you may be in a different type of district, right? And when we, and why is that important, right? Because it, it determines who has a voice in the political process, right? Communities who are kept whole have a, a, a louder voice. Communities who are split up, um, their voice is literally diluted. And what does that actually mean, right? We all know, like, we, you know, if you're in a small part of your council medic district, right, and you've been advocating for resources all these years, and you're wondering why you're not getting the attention is needed, and when you actually look at these maps, you may be one of these small sections across the boulevard, around the corner, and over the mountain, where it's, you know, it's very tough for a lot of council people to get across their districts when it's gerrymandered. So then they have to look at the resources, and most most of them look at where their voting population and where their voting base is. Next slide, please. How should the boundaries change this time? Now we have to say that there has been progress. In 2001, we had the worst councilmatic district uh, maps in the country. If you look at uh, the seventh district, the seventh district uh, ranging from portions of Kensington going all the way up to uh, north, lower northeast and northeast. Um, if you look at 2011, you saw that the districts changed um, a little bit where you know um, the seventh wasn't stretched out in the northeast anymore. Um, and, and if anyone knows anything about that particular Northeast, that's majority of a white population. Um, and we have to make sure that, you know, in this process, that your voices are being heard. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, one of the young ladies mentioned it earlier, there's a lot of redistricting happening right now, congressional, state, and, 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 and councilmatic. And the reason why we're having these sessions around councilmatic redistricting, because there's no um, oversight on, on a fair district maps, right? This process is literally political. It's, 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 um, it's literally political and, and, you know, and very political. That's all I can say, right? It's not brought to the community. Um, the community don't have an input. Um, you know, we had our first community uh, input meeting in Logan and Alney, and we had it for this particular session because we saw on the map that every 10 years, this section changes. And the people in that community wake up every 10 years with a different council person, meaning they have a different, that different council person has a different council priorities. And those councilmatic priorities impact what that council person is going to do for that district or, or, or the boundaries of that district. 
So the goal is to make sure that we have community input in every section of part of this city, especially in Kensington and Port Richmond, to make sure that your voices be included in the 2021 map. Next slide, please. The, um, the target population, the smallest district and the largest district, right? The target population is that we have to have 160,400 people in every district. The smallest district could possibly be 152, 400. We have four councilmatic districts that's going to see some type of shift, right? Two councilmatic districts have to pick up divisions and two councilmatic districts have to lose divisions. So the first councilmatic district has 171,941. They have to lose divisions, right? So when we look at the councilmatic district um, one on our map, we have to figure out you know, where those people are going to go. What district is going to uh, incur a, a, a couple of thousand extra constituents? It, you know, and when we look at the fourth council medic district, the fourth council medic district has to pick up a few thousand, right? So, you know, the fifth council medic district has to lose and the eighth council medic district has to pick up a few, right? So even though we have four council medic districts that's going to see a shift in population, this is going to impact all the council medic districts. Yeah, and here, this is where like, I'll, I'll really emphasize, because like, I realize, you know, we, we know we're, we're, we're covering like a lot of ground in, in these meetings. And also I get something we, we definitely want to stress is that, you know, especially for so many of us who are seeing this issue for the first time, right? This definitely will not be uh, the first, last, and only time you get a chance to kind of weigh in on this. Um, you know, we're ha we have these 10 to 12 meetings around the city. For some folks, they've been thinking about this for a number of weeks or even months. For a lot of folks, like they've never seen this before. So there are going to be some number of additional meetings in, in January and then further, you know, city council will will eventually, uh, probably, surely not this month, but, but probably in, uh, sometime in January, they will put out a new proposed map. Uh, and that's the map we're going to want to make sure as many folks around the city as possible who may be affected by change boundaries can, can weigh in. Because, you know, Abu noted like the, the transition we've had here between that old school map in 2001 and the map drawn before that looked pretty similar. You know, and he, and he noted here the it's just kind of like a good thing and a bad thing. The, the bad thing was, as you noted, like these were some of the most gerrymandered maps in the entire country. And the, you know, the, the, the large uh, and diverse Latino community we have in North Philly was basically, they had their voting power diluted because the seventh district was extended, as you said, all the way up into the Northeast and scooped up a bunch of white voters to, to, to stick into the seventh. So not only was the Latino community in North Philly harmed by that, but all the neighborhoods and some of these neighborhoods here in North Philly here, of course, are predominantly communities of color. The farther up you go in the Northeast are predominantly neighborhoods with, with white folks, like every neighborhood, every community that was split was harmed by that map. So that's the bad thing. The good thing is that because of a lot of community work and a lot of advocacy, the map that was drawn in 2011 and the map we have now is in much, much better shape. Um, there's still a number of features, and this will, I guess we'll go back to the, you know, the map with the figures here. There are a number of different features in the map that it's kind of hard to know why they're there. Are they there for a political reason? Are they there simply because um, you do have to keep, the, keep these districts roughly equal in population, right? You can't have one district with like 300,000 people and another district with 100,000 people. So that's why we have this range here. The district, as, as, as Abu noted, the district with the fewest people can have no fewer than 152,000. The district with the most people in the new map can have no more than 168. So this is why, you know, we have these four districts here that he noted, like that have either too many or too few people, but they're gonna have to, they're, 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 they're either gonna have to give people away or they're gonna have to pick people up from a neighboring district. And, and I guess also to, you know, to make sure this was clear, you know, of course, you know, we don't kind of redistrict by person or by property, it's by division or, or like election precinct. So each of these divisions holds, uh, holds hundreds of people in, in, in each of them. So, you know, I don't think, I'll just go back for one more second here. I don't think we're looking like at a radically different map on the other side of this. Uh, however, and, and also because, you know, the cores of these districts have been the same for many, many decades. And I think a lot of Philadelphians actually would, would will speak positively about the boundaries, uh, boundaries near, nearby them and, and positively about their general district. But uh, for those parts of the city where the, where the boundaries are gonna have to shift, um, those shifts can matter a great deal. Right, and even if the, the boundaries are shifted just by a few blocks, it may not look like a whole lot when you look at the whole city map. But for that given area, um, that can make a big, big difference. So that's why we're, you know, this is the, these meetings are just kind of like one, one, one step of several um, that's being taken to try to make sure folks have a chance to kind of dig, dig in here. And I think, um, I think this point, Abu, should we pause for any, you know any kind of initial questions about about the process? Because I know we're we're covering like a lot of ground just kind of at the outset here before we actually take a look mm -hmm. at the, the no. post map. 
Cool. So does anyone have any question, any, any initial questions about the about the process? I mean, I, I think most of this evening we want to talk about the map itself, especially in, in Kensington and, and Port Richmond. But any initial questions about the, the process? We just we just walked through pretty pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, Anthony. Yeah, go go right ahead. Hey, um, do the judges of election or any other like uh, uh, Republican or Democratic committee people have any say? Can they petition to have their particular division like ward and division transferred or is that not how that works do they not have any sort of say great question great question so yeah these, these divisions are the same divisions we use for election purposes um and the short answer is no no the, the poll workers the judge of elections or the inspector of elections you know they're not directly involved in this process um and actually just you know, scooting back for a second here so you know when we say that city council uh is the is the is the entity the thing that redraws these boundaries? Um, you know that means well, uh, in one sense, it's the 17 member because what they will do is they will introduce a bill. They'll introduce a, an ordinance that describes what the districts look like, ward by ward and division by division. Um, and then, uh, just like any other bill, uh, they will have to um, uh, put it into a committee. There will be at least one public hearing. Uh, it has to get voted out of committee, just like any other piece of legislation. And then, just like any other bill, it will go to the mayor who can sign it or, or veto it. So. Um, you know, at the end of the day, council members have the power in shaping the bill and shaping shaping the districts. But you know, the, it, it's true, however, that communities can have a real um, impact on the shape of these boundaries, and that's what we saw. Uh, that's what we saw about ten years ago. So, yeah, Anthony, that's a great question. Even though it's the, the divisions, the divisions we use for elections are the the building blocks basically of these districts. Um, the the poll workers themselves, yeah, they don't they don't directly have a, an impact on. Uh, uh, on the boundaries, uh, just just because they're poll workers, of course, as as community leaders and, and as, as community stakeholders, uh, they could they could you know they, I'm sure we've had a number of poll workers attend these meetings, um, but no, the, the election you know the election piece of of, a, of our of our city and the divisions in that way are are a little bit separate from from this particular process. Yeah, so great work. And same is the same true for the Republican or Democrat um, committee people or party officials party representatives great great question so um and this is why you know redistricting is just it's inherently kind of complicated inherently kind of messy and also as i'll be stressed like it's political like it's and there, there's kind of no there's kind of no way around that because there are different things that people will prioritize in drawing a map um, some people will prioritize communities of various sorts right whether it's neighborhoods uh, ethnic or language groups, business corridors, school catchment areas. I mean, there are all sorts of community interests that can be prioritized. Um, and there, there are political interests uh, that can be prioritized too, whether it's like a part of the city where an elected official knows they have kind of more of their base. Uh, or of course, as you noted, like we have this political infrastructure that's set up now too, where we have ward boundaries, right? And there certainly there certainly will be some folks uh, in town who will prioritize ward boundaries and trying to keep ward wards whole as well, not, not split. So um, it's it's another perspective that's out there, and it's um, you know at least certainly from the from the from the where the ward leaders said the Democratic and Republican ward leaders they certainly have a great interest in trying to keep their wards whole and, and also not get split between uh, between districts. So um, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, there, it's 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 funny there there are all sorts of different stakeholders um, who would have who who could potentially be impacted by these lines kind of shift one way or another. Great question. Any others? Honestly, keep keep the questions coming. I this is this is all, especially because when this is all all new stuff. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Abu, what do you think? Should we should we move on into talking about the uh, map itself? Uh, let's get into the fun part. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna yield I'm gonna yield to you on that. Okay. All right. Here I'll, I'll bring up I'll bring up the map. So. Um, all right, folks. I'm gonna, while I bring up the map here, I'm just going to stress again. Like we wanted to give folks a kind of a quick um, preview of what the process is, but you know, at the end of the day, like not everybody. You know, we don't all have to be uh, you know super nerds on on how the redistricting process works. What we really want to get into this evening is the map itself and the district boundaries themselves, um, especially as they relate to uh, the communities on the ground. So here, I'm going to pull back for a second. So this is a mapping tool. Um, called uh, DRA 2020 again. Well, and uh, we're going to send out an email after the um, uh, after the meeting here. We'll we'll make sure like the background resources, the PowerPoint presentation, this mapping tool that for anyone who wants to tinker with it, uh, it can do that. But 
Um, uh, this is a very similar to the mapping technology that the folks inside city council uh, will be using too. Um, and actually a really good bit of news in redistricting these days is that um, for a couple decades there, it was really just folks on the inside um, who had the mapping technology and the mapping kind of firepower. You know, in this day and age, everybody, everybody has access to mapping tools uh, to, uh, to tinker with the boundaries uh, in like a thousand or 10,000 different ways. Um, and I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how many folks will be you know, tinkering in a thousand different ways with our council map, but you know, the, the point is for those folks who do want to, to fiddle with the boundaries, whether it's just for your area or for the whole city, um, this is a tool where, where you could do that. So, of course, here we got the whole city filled off of here. Um, zooming in just here for a minute, of course, we got City Hall uh, right downtown, right? And that's the, this is the intersection of Broad Street, North Broad, South Broad, and then Market running east west. And so we're going to zoom in, right, to the Kentington and Port Richmond part of the city where um, at least most of us this evening uh, kind of live, live and work. And you know, this is this is where we've actually we've we've done our best to try to tailor the the the, uh, the virtual community meetings that, that have been scheduled last month and this month to those parts of the city where the boundaries are more likely to shift and where things are just a little bit more complicated. Uh, because there are, I'll just pull back for another second real quick. You know, there are parts of the city where uh, some Philadelphians are going to stay in their district, right? Regardless of what's going to happen. So way up in the northeast, like these folks are staying in the tenth district. Way down in the southwest, these folks are staying in the second district. Um, that's true for a lot of Philadelphians, but for some folks, and so especially for some folks who are closer to a boundary, uh, these can shift around a bit. So um, we're gonna zoom in here for a second. And we actually have several, several community meetings that, that are being held just for this, this large part, part of the city, uh, Eastern North Philly and, and, the, and the River Ward. So there's actually another meeting for um, you know, Eastern North Philly kind of generally. And we're, you know, we're kind of targeting that to the boundary between the fifth, um, the fifth district is here in yellow. Uh, currently represented by Daryl Clark. The seventh district is kind of this beige, right? Currently represented by Maria Sanchez. And so one of our meetings is, is, this for, is for this general boundary all the way up from kind of north uh, to Hunting Park, all the way down to uh, South Kensington. There's gonna be another meeting um, kind of primarily for Fishtown and Northern Liberties, which are kind of like split right down the middle uh, by this little extension of the fifth district. And this is actually an example of a part of this, you know, a part of the map, but like this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, as far as communities go, right? I, I can't, I've never heard of like a community or, or public oriented reason uh, for this extension to be there. I've, I've heard, I've heard a political, of a political reason for it to be there. And actually, uh, you know, to everyone's, under, to pretty much everyone's understanding the, you know, our, uh, the council president lives in this extension. That's probably why that's there, but I don't know of a good neighborhood reason for that extension being there. So as we move up into Kensington, right? So the seventh again is, is, uh, uh, you know, Maria Sanchez is currently represented by Council, Councilwoman Maria Sanchez. The first district, of course, in the purple, represented right now by Mark Squilla. And the first district is another kind of big, sprawling one, goes really deep into South Philly, all the way to the stadiums uh, and the and the interstate, um, and then uh, you know way up into Kenton in here. And then the the greenish, kind of the salt green colored district uh, to the east and along. The Delaware River is Council District 6, right, currently represented by, by Bobby Heenan, um, at least represented by Bobby Heenan through, uh, through mid-February uh, until, until Councilman uh, Heenan will be, uh, will be sentenced and we'll, have to, and we'll have to leave office. So, you know, this is a part of the city where, um, you know, the first district, at least through the last cycle, it, it, you know, included uh, a big part of Kenton and Port Richmond here, but um, you can see here as well, and this is part of like another little part of the nuance and complication in, in, the, in drawing these maps is, We'll just zoom in a little bit farther. So you can see like the little purple, purple thin boundaries here. So these are the divisions, right? These are the same divisions we use for election purposes. And so on election day, each of these divisions has its um, its own set of, set of voting machines and its own set of poll workers. Um, and you know, probably, probably more often than not, you have multiple divisions that are housed within one one place, one you know, one rec center or one church, one school. Um, but for again, for city council redistricting purposes. We have to draw these boundaries according to the division. So we can't cut divisions in half. Uh, if we did, it would drive our election officials completely crazy. Um, uh, so uh, that is one um, kind of sticking point here when you draw these boundaries is you can't split the divisions um, and therefore like that kind of limits to some extent uh, your options for, for where the boundaries go. So again, just to kind of round out the tour and then I'd really love, to, we'd, we'd love to open this up to the, to the group um, and to talk about kind of the communities here and, and the boundaries. but. You know, on the northern end here, right? This is up at up at the creek. Um, on the southern end, 
uh, on the southern side rather uh, of the of the first district. You got Aramingo. It dips it dips south a bit more and kind of cuts straight through Port Richmond here, right? Um, east uh, down here along Allegheny Avenue. So kind of this is this is kind of one side uh, of the conversation, at least on the Port Richmond side, and and again part of Kensington. On the north side, right, the boundary, and this is much of the boundary between the first in purple and the seventh in beige is Kensington Avenue, right? All the way up from the creek, straight down Kensington Avenue, straight down Kensington Avenue. It dips um, across Kensington and all, actually all the way to, to Frankfurt right here, um, at least for a stretch. You know, and this is an example where I don't, I don't know if this would be like a kind of a political reason for this little extension to be there. Um, if I had to guess, it, it, was, it was more to the fact of uh, the seventh district probably needing more people. And so they had to pick those divisions up from some direction. This, these are just, these just happen to be the divisions that are part of the seventh. But so this is kind of seemingly perhaps, and I, again, we welcome feedback from folks on the, on the, on the call here about um, this little kind of disruption, I guess you could call it between Kenton and Ave on this side, dips down, grabs, grabs these blocks here, and then jumps back up to Kensington uh, for another little stretch. Uh, and then again, it, it dips down uh, to, to Front Street here um, and to, uh, let's see, on uh, Norris, finally, on, on the southern end uh, of, this, uh, of, the, of this boundary. So, you know, we do realize like this is a lot of, this is a lot, this is a huge swath of the city, right? A whole bunch of neighborhoods, a whole bunch of different communities. Um, but this is an area where um, things could change around Port Richmond's, things could certainly change around Kensington. Uh, things could change around around fish. And again, we I don't think we were going to talk about fish town as much uh, this evening, but um, really want to get folks views on the kind of the communities on the ground here. Uh, to the extent there are kind of clear or shared boundaries, kind of where those are, number one. Uh, and number two, um, if if you have if you have an opinion already about these current boundaries, I think that would also be really helpful to hear. Again, we're gonna have some version of this conversation in January once council puts out a proposed map. Um, but it's really helpful, not just for us, but for, because we're recording these meetings, anyone out there across the city who's going to be drawing maps, uh, anyone in city council who will be drawing maps, for, for them to have a sense about what folks in these areas, uh, in these communities, what they, what they think, what they think. So um, that's kind of the quick tour. And at this point, again, we'd like, kind of love to open it up for um, anyone here with us this evening to kind of talk about either like their community, you know, your sense of shared boundaries, your sense of clear boundaries, uh, and then if you're willing to, to talk about the, the district boundaries as well, right? The good, the bad, and the, and the ugly. So um, I'll, pause, I'll pause there and see if anyone want to kind of, wants to open up the bidding um, to talk about things happening on the ground here. Yeah, like a, like a, like a boon, you know, and the, the organizers do this sometimes, the teachers certainly do this sometimes, but we may start start calling on folks, <laughs> if only to talk about like, you're, especially if you're with, a, you're with us this evening from, from a community community organization to kind of stress the, the, the boundaries of your, of your community organization, that, that as well is like really, really valuable and really helpful. Any kind of first takers here? Anthony. You know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Anthony, did you want you want to start first? Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. There we go. Um, <clears throat> I guess the main thing that comes up would be, um, yes, exactly where you've got it there at the border between um, Kensington and Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. um, that little area where Squilla's district. Um, leaves Kensington Avenue mm -hmm. and the border yeah. goes down to Frankfurt Ave. Yeah. Right. Um, I know the first district needs to lose people, not gain people, but right. if either he, if either the first district could include everything between Kensington, I mean, between, you know, Lehigh and Clearfield or Lehigh and uh, like trying to figure out what these streets are, but mm -hmm. um, if that could just be a straight line along Kensington Ave, that might be good. <laughs> that would mean that our community group um, is not split between the first and seventh; it's only the first district, which would be helpful. Right, right, right. yeah. Or oh, if ahead. the seventh district could be, or if the seventh district could be expanded down to Aramingo, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you, Anthony, and you just actually named a, a reinforced like a really important dynamic that uh, 
uh, I, I, sh I should have flagged again. So, you know, like, like Abu noted on the previous slide, um, the first district is one of those districts that has too many people right now, uh, right? There, there has been uh, a lot of new residents, a lot of development and gentrification in parts of the parts of the first. And so, yeah, the first district does need to pick up divisions from someplace. But, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean, though, that the first district couldn't gain, couldn't gain divisions from some, from some direction, right? Because the first district could gain divisions from here, but it could lose a bunch of divisions from another part. So, you know, this is where it's still helpful feedback, kind of regardless of what the population numbers are right now, that if, uh, you know, kind of one of your senses would be that, like, it'd be, it'd have Kenton and Ave to be a straight boundary, like, all the way, all the way down. Um, and, and could you remind us again that the, your, with your, your organization, kind of what the what, what the boundaries are with that you cover? Our boundaries are Lehigh to Clearfield, and then Kensington to Aramingo. Yeah, I'm totally on board with Anthony on this. I, this little chunk there just seems so awkward um, mm -hmm. because, like, everything that goes on in that little chunk goes on further down. So it's like one community. Mm -hmm. um, it, so I don't know, it just seems really weird that it was excluded like that, especially like it's not even in a, you know, straight angle or square or anything. It's just like awkward. But um, yeah, I totally agree with Anthony, like either expand downward or move up, but somehow that community has to like come together. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so, and, and again, so it, it, the, the, the Kenton and Ave boundary right here, like this, this is a, this, this seems to make sense here. It's just your, your initial sense here is that extend, simply extending it, that would, that would keep this community whole and, and, and part of, I guess, the, the organizations that service like this side, this side of the Ave. Okay. That's helpful to know. So. I would totally agree with, um, Roxy and, and Anthony, because that's that area that's in that little squid right there. Mm -hmm. um, I am actually on Helen. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that would at least put us in one um, district, you know, one council. So mm -hmm. um, that straight line would, would make absolutely a lot of sense to um, to include that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of this area right here is on the area where NKCDC service plus on the other side and all the areas that Anthony just mentioned. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. that area would be, should be inclusive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, then, and you mentioned like, so an, another would, so that, so that would be one possibility to include, and it, it, it looks like it's just four divisions here, right? One, two, three, four divisions to add those to the first. You, you mentioned is would another, what, what would what would be the advantages or disadvantages, I suppose, of using Frankfurt Ave um, as a as a boundary to add all to add these divisions to to the seventh? I mean, it seems like that would that would seems like that would keep that would still split a number of your organizational uh, kind of boundaries, right? If if Frankfurt were used as the, as the boundary between the between the first and seventh, yeah, Roxy, I see you shaking your head. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Helpful to know. No. This is Pastor Capers. I guess the question I have, if that happens, what happens in terms of funding and things of that nature that is currently directed to this district if that was to happen and the boundaries were um, moved to Frankfurt Avenue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good question. So, you know, this this is where it's not like there's going to be like a dramatic, a dramatic change in like funding or services right away if, if the line shift one way or another. Um, but what is true, and, and I, it was really good to hear actually right, right from the outset, like folks kind of communicating this, this concern is that if a community is split, um, it just can be a little bit more challenging to work with, um, to work with multiple council, council offices, um, mm -hmm. or for like, certainly for the folks who live there, like if, 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 uh, if, for example, you know, folks are very familiar with Kensington Ave being, being the boundary between one district and another, like, you know, everybody knows on the south side of Kensington Ave, like you're the first. North side of Kensington Ave, you're like in your seventh. Like there's there's clarity for the residents too. Um, mm -hmm. So when the when it's not such a clear boundary like this, it's more confusing for residents um, for starters. But then I think also as you all note, it seems to be like this. You know these blocks right here, right? If if they if they basically um, are part of this larger community on the south side of Kensington Avenue, you know they um, they just get they just may get more and more coherent attention perhaps 
from mm -hmm. the council member who represents the first if right. they're included on this this area. And you know, this this is where like you know, elected officials like they do have limited capacity, limited attention. You know, I, and, you know, again, and and like very, I'm, I'm glad to boost this at the outset. We're not, we're certainly not here to talk about how council members, Spurla and Sanchez in particular, you know, kind of negotiate this this boundary right here. But it's just kind of a, a general principle where if a community is split, we're going to have a harder time kind of getting heard. That's just kind of generally the concern. So, um, right. I mean, because and and again, we're not trying to put anyone on blast or things of, things of that nature. But when it comes to Councilman Squilla, we can get in contact with him. He represents us well. And, you know, so we want to keep that type of representation and relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Pat, just to um, jump in, uh, Pastor, I think, I mean, you're right about that, right? You know, that's mm -hmm. why Councilmatic District is important because it's like, you know, nothing drastic, you know, like Pat said, like funding or anything, but what's mm -hmm. going to change is Councilmatic priority. Right. And that mm -hmm. falls on the leader. Mm -hmm. So if your council, if you have a relationship with your council person, you could pick up the phone, or you know your council person loves to invest money in corridors, or you know your council person loves to invest money in their parks and their rec centers because they have um, the track record to do it. That's why this is important. Because if you're used to one council medic priority and then you wake up because you know in this process and you have a different one, and mm -hmm. you know the quality of life just kind of changes, you know that's because of Council medic redistricting. It's important. So I kind of just want to, you know, to make sure folks like we connect the dots. You know, it's not right. you know, having the power, but it's just making sure that your priorities, you have that relationship, um, you know, and that they have, you know, priorities on what they want to do, you know, in that district. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's again, that's that's a really helpful start here for the evening. Just to be talking about, I mean, of course, Kentina Ave is like a, a major portion of this battery. So um, that discussion on, on its own is really helpful. Um, so I'm just kind of curious, what about as you move and as you move down to this part of the boundary between the first and the seventh, um, you can see this is this is Kenton and Avenue right here, right? And then it, it inter intersects North uh, North Front. Um, and so Front Street here uh, on both sides is part of the seventh. It looks like there's just one division here that's part of the seventh as opposed to being part of the first here. Um, I mean, does, is anyone like familiar with this, this particular area that's like this set of blocks, like would it make sense for like on the east side of front for that also to be part of the first district? Um, I mean, pretty similar to like these these divisions up here. So that it would be like North North Street would be the boundary here and then Kensington like all the way up. Does anyone know if that would, uh, initial thoughts on that? And again, if you're just not, not familiar with this, like these particular blocks, then that's also okay. Yeah, trying to think about like the needs of the communities and and whether there's differences similarities um i think this particular section right here this is where all the stores and everything were at once or there's still some stores left but it used to be like a major hub for shopping and everything and it in recent years has kind of gone downhill unfortunately um and it's very close to like the Kensington schools. I, I think it may make sense to um, incorporate them, but I don't know. They they also um, don't face the same challenges that the other side faces with, mm -hmm. you know, the um, drug addiction and all that is seen, but not as much as this section. But then again, you know, with the first, you know, we also have Center City, so. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're going to just base it on things like that, then I don't know it really makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rox, Rox, I mean, you just named a really another real important kind of factor or dynamic in these districts is that they're quite big, right? Like, a, a, you know, like the the average the average size will be one hundred sixty thousand people, and so you know, some districts are they're just more compact and they're tighter because of the part of part of the city they're in. Like, you know, West West Philly is well, actually, no, West Philly is West Philly as well, right? You got a large swath, large swath of West Philly facing similar issues, and then you got University University City, right? Over here in the fourth, you got you know a big swath of West Philly here, um, in like Haddington, Carroll Park, Overbrook, Winfield, but then you got like Roxborough, many you know, and East Falls up here on the other side of the river, like very different, very different communities. So it's yeah, it's the same thing the first year with, you know, the first district, the, the north part of the first, right, Kensington, like, then you got Center City, then you got South Philly. So, like, you got a lot of different communities all within one district. And this is where, like, um, you know, it's kind of tough to say how much this will change and, and, uh, 
and, until you really start think, you know, fiddling with the boundaries here. But that, that's definitely another challenge for, for anyone who tries to elect, who, who tries to represent uh, one of these districts is they just, they cover like a lot of different communities. So that's, that's a really good point, really good point. Um, here, well, how about, how about this? I mean, just, just to kind of like kind of reaffirm boundaries here, like would anyone make an argument for the first district going uh, across the creek here? Like, is that another boundary? Like that, that makes a lot of sense. It should end, end here. I think that's a good boundary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I think you know, the neighborhoods change kind of pretty quickly as, as you get over here, right, to the uh, farther into into the east and towards the river. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about Arrow? So on on the southern side here, Arrow Ar Mingo is a boundary here, right? You got Arrow Mingo and then Castor, and then you can see like some of these divisions. Um, well, actually, some of these divisions are quite large. So actually, this is another challenge here with drawing the map. So you can see these. This division like is super long, from like the water all the way up to what is this Belgrade uh, Street up here. That division is super long. This division is not just long, but actually quite wide. Um, and that's because like this, a lot of this is industrial, right? So that's uh, that's kind of another challenge challenge here. But um, I guess is anyone with us from Port Richmond this evening by any chance? I live in Port Richmond. Oh yeah. Okay. Any do, do you have any, any initial thoughts about like kind of where where this line is right now? I mean, so so the boundary between the first right in purple and the sixth, which is currently represented by Bobby Heenan, is Allegheny Avenue right here, and then it, it kind of zigs and zags a little bit because I, I think mostly because of the just the, the shapes of these, these divisions. Um, but do you have any initial thoughts on like this this boundary? Or would it make sense to like try to bring a all Port Richmond into the sixth, or the rest of Port Richmond into the into the first? I mean, if this is another neighborhood that's kind of split, seems like. I guess I don't have, I guess I don't have strong opinions about that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of a reason. Um, it uh, Allegheny is kind of a neat way of splitting the neighborhood in half. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I guess I don't. I don't really have much to say about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just curious. Just curious. And again, this this is this is another one of those kind of challenging areas where, like, you know, it's residential, like on this side of Richmond Street, but like then all industrial on the other side, right? Um, so, okay, okay. We're pulling pulling back other you know other other thoughts other thoughts here about the general area. I mean, so it sounds like. Kenton and Ave again, like there seems to be like some sense that this is a decent boundary and, and even to extend it all the way down to the southern part of uh, uh, at least this the southern part of this part of the, the boundary between the first and the seventh. Um, are there any other kind of thoughts about the shape, the overall shape of the first and the overall shape of the first, I guess, you know, kind of tucked between the sixth and the seventh? Pull back again there. Yeah. Let's see. What about? Um, I mean, this this is a. Uh, well, I guess this is getting into, into fish town here. I mean, this is a. Uh, let me ask this. So this is um, North Street, right? This is that's the southern southern boundary. You know, to the extent that like all of these communities are going to be in inside inside the first district, is North Street like is that also pretty um, uh, understandable boundary? At least on the southern side. What do folks think about that? Because you got North Street here, and then Frankfurt Ave. Um, again, it's kind of cutting down this way. And actually, I mean, one of the things that could potentially happen is right, for this part of Fishtown to be added to the, the first. I mean, we, we don't know again exactly how this put down, but um, anyone have any initial thoughts about North Street being a boundary right here? Like, is this, is this one, is this one that, like that would make sense to people around here or not so much? Or are we not sure? Yeah, well, that's another one. It's another one we can we can we can think over again. This is this is why like as soon as like proposed maps start getting introduced, we're gonna make sure we send those around to everybody <laughs> because once once the proposals are, the proposals are out there, um, we'll have uh, we'll have plenty more to to talk about here. Okay. All right. Well, I guess kind of kind of you know last call here. Any any other kind of final thoughts at least on on this part of the uh, this part of the city and the Kensington and Port Richmond area in particular. I just have a question. Um, the yeah. Fishtown area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There seems to be like a little tail end that 
almost dips into us. I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure what that is right there. Well, right a little there. towards the bottom where Marlboro and uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't know. I was just thinking out loud, like mm -hmm. how did that happen? Um, it yeah. just seems like there's like a chunk of fish town that just kind of extended down into us, but got excluded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, part of this is like the shape of the divisions and some of these divisions are kind of uh, large or, or kind of funky shapes. Um, this a good, I'm, I'm scrolling over right now to try to see which wards these are in. So this, this division right here in yellow, that's the 18th ward, 18th ward, 18th ward, 18th ward, 18th, 18th, 18th. These are all 18th ward. Let's see. This division here is also the 18th. And then this is the fifth down here. So, you know, I think, and let me scoot up. So it's interesting, like not only is the neighborhood split, but the ward is also split. Um, so I think that's part of the reason why there'll be a lot of conversation around this part of the city, but I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure why this is, why these particular divisions got added to the fifth and not like, you know, why, why the line was drawn at Frank Frankfurt Avenue. Um, like I, I mentioned, the, our, our, current, our current council member for the fifth, I believe, lives on the west side of Frankfurt. So I don't know if they're, I don't think these divisions have to be part of the fifth, uh, the fifth district. So I'm not sure. It's a good question. And, and I think uh, guarantee there are going to be folks down here who have an opinion about right now, not right now being in this little extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all righty. So here, I'll, uh, I'll pull off your screen and um, let's see. Uh, are you still with us? You, want, you think we should uh, move in kind of into the last, last segment here after that, uh, after that discussion about the map? Uh, yes, sir. All righty. Here, I can bring up here. Let me bear with me for one sec. I'll bring up like our last slide and then you can kind of close us out here with me for one second. All right. Um, but do you want to you want to walk through these or do you want me uh, want me to for this evening? You got it? Oh, you're on mute. Yes. You can. You got it, Pat. Sorry about that. I'm getting okay. two, actually two Zoom calls at once. <laughs> All good. All good. All right, folks. So, um, thank you again so much for joining this evening. Uh, that was that was a really helpful discussion. Again, this this is actually it was a really good example. Oh, nuts! I'm sorry. I wasn't. I wasn't. I was not sharing screen there. Bear with me for one second. I want to make sure everybody can see this. <laughs> one second. One second. I was. I was putting a slide up there. There we go. There we go. Everybody should be able to see bullets. <laughs> Okay, so um, thank you again so much for joining us. Um, this was actually like a perfect example of how, uh, you know, if you look at the whole citywide map, right, just changing the boundaries just a little bit, division by division, it may not seem like that's a big deal looking at the whole city, uh, but like on the ground, it matters a lot, right? And so this is where we, we wanted to start the discussion, at least in, the, in this part of the city. And this is what we're doing in other parts of the city as well, so that in January, and this is what I think we're gonna have to anticipate when, when council puts out a proposed map, um, or it's, it's a chance there, there may be other kind of proposed maps kind of floating around out there that are, that are drawn by other people, other people or stakeholders in the city. Um, but at a bare minimum, when city council put out, puts out its proposed citywide district map, uh, we are very, very quickly going to get the word out to everybody, like within, you know, 24 hours, 12 hours of that map being introduced um, so that you have a chance to take a look at it. We will schedule some number of meetings uh, for, for folks around the city to kind of weigh in. Um, you know, we, I, we, uh, we should have noted at the outset that like these meetings, of course, are public. We're recording them, uh, basically kind of part of a public record of, of discussion about these, about these district boundaries and, and the communities, how they kind of intersect. Um, the council members and their staff have been invited to, to all these. They're, they're, they're plenty, they're very much aware of, of uh, uh, kind of this, this community engagement project. And surely when the new maps are, are, are introduced, the proposed maps are introduced, um, and when we hold the meetings around those proposed maps, uh, we'll, we will make sure that the council members and their staff are, are invited they are invited to those too um, so they can hear pe kind of people's feedback um, so as far as like next steps here like this is what's on the screen um, I would certainly encourage you to talk about these these uh, these these current district boundaries right the, the, the proposed ones we won't see until probably January um, but the current districts right there's there's plenty to talk about and to talk about these with with folks in your community again feedback, it's like, oh, we like this district, we like this boundary, it's just stay where it is, like that's important. 
uh, feedback that's like, no, this boundary is not actually, this is not working for us. We got to change it this way or that way. Like that's really important feedback too, right? So with both sides, good feedback or bad, bad feedback. Um, there is a survey. Again, uh, we'll make sure this, this goes out to everybody um, after the meeting, a, an online survey that, that any individual or any organization is welcome to fill out and basically gets at the same question that we're wrestling with this evening. Again, like kind of where's your community, where are the shared boundaries? And then, you know, to the extent you'd have an opinion about the council district boundaries, kind of what do you, what do you think about those? Um, for those of you who are part of a part of an organization, I would definitely encourage you if, you, if you're able and willing to put together kind of a shared statement about the, about where you think the boundaries should shift. Um, we've had we've had a few organizations that have done that already. Uh, we actually kind of linked to them on the on the website here. And you know, this is where like in some parts of the city, like there just isn't that, that much to talk about because because folks are going to be too 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 impacted. Um, you know, I think Kenton and Port Richmond though is certainly an area, a couple air, a couple larger areas where like it is going to matter one way or another. So. Uh, we're trying to generate a public record about what folks think. I would also, of course, encourage you to, if your organization does have a spe specific opinion, take it to the council members too, right? Take it to their staff. Like they need to know about what you all think, because at the end of the day, you'll, they're going to be negotiating this inside a city city council. And, you know, this is where um, if they know what you think in your neighborhood, your community, uh, that's actually going to be, that could be really important information for them because when they negotiate, like, you know, sometimes these, these opinions come in intention, right? Sometimes adding people to the first, first district, for example, and that's kind of what we were talking about with those several divisions, adding them to the first, you know, that that's going to come into, into tension with what folks may want to see in another part of the first district. So, you know, I think it'd be very helpful for Mark Squilla, very helpful for Maria Sanchez to know what y'all think. Um, so that they would negotiate like that your, your viewpoint will have a better chance of getting heard. Right. That's what this that what that's what this is all about. So, um, of course, like the, the mapping tool, we'll make sure everybody has access to if, if you do want to tinker with the map with it, whether it's the whole map or your part of the city, um, that can be a really powerful way to communicate, especially to your council member, like exactly what you want to see. Um, and then kind of step four there is, again, what we've been kind of hinting at this evening. Um, this is just kind of an initial discussion once we get into January and especially if we're looking at a February deadline, uh, this may move pretty quick where a mapping bill will, be, will be introduced and we will have you know, a matter of weeks, maybe even days, I mean, a, week, a couple of weeks potentially to kind of take a quick look and, and get feedback in. So this is where, you know, again, it's, whether you're, in, you're here as an individual or here, here as an organization, really get ready for when that mapping proposal comes out, like get ready to take a look, get an opinion, and then like, you know, communicate that opinion to, to your council member or council members uh, who would who need to hear it. So that's what the um, that's what the, the you know overall purpose and, and goal was of this uh, of, of this evening. Um, I guess I'll, I'll pause there again. Like any, I'd love to take any kind of final questions or concerns or thoughts because um, again, I, I realize we're covering kind of a lot of ground. This is and this is admittedly kind of this is tr tricky because we only do this every ten years. Um, and part of what we're doing is like we're building up kind of our civic muscle because we will do this again uh, in 2031. And uh, you know, hopefully, most of us will be around for for, for that cycle too, and 2041 and 2051. Um, so again, any kind of final questions or, or thoughts uh, at the uh, at the end here? Okay. I just wanted to thank you for all the information. A lot of clarity was given, um, especially on the mapping and the districts and how um, the different um, districts are. are. And um, I'm just appreciative of everybody's input and um, looking forward to the next phase. And I'm looking forward to sending the mapping so I can play around with it. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the Capers and Anthony, and we all, you know, know each other, and Mr. Roxy down there, and I'm quite sure each of us sharing our input to each other until we get back. And plus, um, contacting um, Councilman Squilla, you know, being in his presence, he's a very good guy. And um, so thank you very much for allowing me to be here and looking forward to your to the next phase of it. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Brenda. Yes, I want to say this was very informative. Thank you as well. Terrific, terrific, much appreciated. Yep, I, I just, same thing as Pastor Capers and Ms. Brenda, thank you so much. I definitely learned a lot and I'm looking forward to uh, receiving the materials, playing around with the map. Um, this was definitely um, a safe space to share what we thought, what we currently think, you know, um, and all of our idea, you know, ideas and everything. So I just want to thank you, Pat and um, Abu, and everyone who participated.
Awesome. Thank you. All righty. Um, all right, folks. Well, hey, thank you. Thank you so much. This was, this was, this was an awesome discussion. Um, yeah, look, you will be hearing from us actually very soon with a follow-up email on, on this meeting. And otherwise, um, I stress like you'll have my information, Abu's information. Please reach out to us individually anytime, seriously, anytime about this. Um, and then, you know, otherwise, there'll be a lot to do in January and it's going to happen pretty quick. So just kind of hold on, hold on tight. All righty. Okay. Thank you. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank Good night, everyone. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All righty. Bye bye.